Kids back to the classrooms for thousands of students on Grand Bahama. A school in mourning after two students die following a tragic accident. And police needs your help in locating a wanted suspect. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shishina wolf Farkas, and as always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news, it was back to school today for students throughout the country. Here on Grand Bahama, the threat of rain did not affect the return of hundreds of students to the classrooms following that long summer break. Well, we have team coverage on back to school tonight, and we begin with Italia Hall in the Freeport area. Students were smartly dressed and ready for the first day of school. At the St. George's High School, Principal Keith Barr was happy to welcome the students back to the classrooms. Member of Parliament for Central Grand Bahama, Iram Lewis, was also on hand for the start of the school year. He says the physical state of the schools was given priority. We hope to do much better than we did last year. We want to make sure our technical and vocational program did really good with BGCSE national exam passes. So you want to keep that on track and this year we hope to uh, display a technical and vocational exhibition. We do that like but every two or three years, you know, to really showcase what we do here at St. George's High School. So we're excited about this year. It is very important for us to come here and, and connect with the students and greet them on the first day and encourage them um, and to ensure that they have a good semester, to be here for the teachers and also let the parents know that they'll be a part of this enti entire experience. Um, we, we want to, to advise them that they have to stay focused, um, knowing that they are are indeed the future leaders. Over at the Walter Parker School, there are some structural issues. Minister of State for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, was on hand to view the progress of repairs and to welcome the little ones. He says he is pleased with the repairs that have been made so far. One of the things that we wanted to ensure was that there was no work being done during the school hours. So as you'll see, there are no contractors that are here. The place is cleaned up. And after school and during the weekends will be when the work will be completed. But we are happy. Uh, we wanted to ensure that there was a smooth opening. Uh, all of the students are here. Uh, none of them have had to be relocated, so we are happy about that. And so things are going well uh, this morning. District Superintendent for West Grand Bahama and Bimini, Ivan Butler, noting that the contractors are actually ahead of schedule. We still have some cosmetic work to do and some finish work to do and we're anticipating that should be completed by the end of the week. Principal of the institution, Edna Gomez, says the focus this year is success. Despite some of the challenges we've been having, I'm so happy to see them. They're all excited to be back. I'm excited to have them back. Teachers are ready to go. You know, and so we, we just want them to know success, hard work, excellence will be our mantra for this school year. And at the Hugh Campbell Primary School, Principal Lily Strawn Moxie says she is pleased to see the excitement on the faces of parents and teachers. She says the focus this year is technology. Our teachers are poised for learning virtually and exposing the children to technology in a realistic way. Uh, this year, we are encouraging the students, the parents, and the teachers, not to mention the wider community, to support us as we promote lifting as you climb through technology. Teacher Olivia Roll says this year she will be able to teach her students math and language using laptops. We're using a class flow program where every student, I will be able to see what every student is doing from my master computer. If someone is struggling, I will be able to designate a specific activity for them to do. Well, overall, most schools in the Freeport area are prepared and ready to go for the new school year. We now go to our Jay Philippe, who visited some schools in the Western District. Thank you, Italia. We visited a few schools in the West Grand Bahama District, and we spoke to a few principals, and they seem pretty excited about day one. At the West End Primary, Principal Nvidia Mills says this year, they will be putting emphasis on two main areas this school year. We have a lot of new exciting things that are happening here at West End Primary School. We have a number of clubs that are going on and we're really striving to make sure that we improve the reading comprehension level here at the school as well as the multiplication fluency. Over at Martintown Primary, Principal Leslie Newton has high expectations for the new school year. 
With a brand new school year, there are great expectations. Nothing but great things for Martin Town Primary School. While at the Martin Town Primary School, we caught up with Member of Parliament for the area, Keisha Parker Edgecombe. We are particularly happy that the schools in West Grand Bahama continue to do well. Um, notwithstanding challenges, of course, that we have every academic school year, we believe that the most important thing that we have to do for our students is to show them that we can go through it and we can come out on top. Um, this year, we are all about staying in school and promoting that message of the importance of education. And I think that with the partnership between community leaders, parents, and teachers, we'll do well for our, our children. Eight Mile Rock High Principal Chester. Mr. Cooper, who's entering his second year at the institution, said it's important that the school improve from last year's BJC and BGCSE results. We want to push our kids to perform better on examinations, and I want to just commend our teachers because they work so hard with our students, and um, we had an improvement in BGCSE and in BJC. And like I say, this year, I told them we got pushed the bar even further. Still in the Western District of Grand Bahama. Bartlett Hill Primary Principal Gia Walker touching on some key areas that staff will be focusing on this academic year. Reading is one of the key areas that we will be focusing on. We want to make sure that all students are reading at their grade levels or above. The expectations are quite high. Our students came in this morning full of enthusiasm. The parents came along as well and they were excited. So we're looking forward to awesome things this school year. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Jay Philippe. Guys, well, officers of the Royal Bahamas Police Force were out and about throughout the school zones today. The officer in charge of Grand Bahama, Assistant Commissioner Samuel Butler, heading the team of officers on the school beat. We had an opportunity to dialogue briefly with some of the students and they uh, filled with excitement for this new school term and we will continue to build relationship with the stakeholders of the school and the students throughout the course of this year. Uh, we recognize as uh, providing public safety for our children is very uh, important to us, uh, important on the agenda of our Commission of Police as one of its priorities and uh, we will continue to follow that mandate. But we also know that the students are certainly our future. ACP Butler says as school reopens, the streets will be busy. And he's calling on all road users to obey the laws of the road. Observe the school zone, slow down, and uh, drive safe and precaution uh, as they come through the school zone. And also we are speaking with the students and ensuring that they understand uh, the rules of engagement of the road to be able to be safe, uh, to walk on the uh, sidewalk as much as possible, and to stay out of the uh, way of traffic. Switching gears back to school was anything but a happy occasion for students at the Jack Hayward High School today. The institution was hit by a tragedy just hours before the new school term began. Italia Hall was there. The start of the 2018-2019 school year was not as pleasant here at the Jack Hayward High School. As two of the persons involved in the traffic fatality over the weekend were students of this school. One, a deputy head boy, and the other, a prefect. Both were preparing to enter the 12th grade. On Monday morning, a special assembly was held where many persons reflected on the lives lost. Students were emotional and fought to hold back tears as they heard a motivational message from Pastor Laquez Williams. It's okay to cry because you have memories together. And those are the things that will keep you. Those are the things that should push you forward and say, I'm going to be the best me this school semester. Those are the things that should help you say, man, listen, I'm going to make sure I'm not going to skip class. I'm not going to do things that I shouldn't do because guess what? I want to honor the lives of the two guys. Many of you have questions trying to figure out how you're going to make it even through the rest of the school year. But can I tell you something today? The Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Is it going to be easy? Oh no. But with God help, you can get through this. Minister of State for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Quasi Thompson, visiting the Jack Haywood School, giving condolences on behalf of the government. While Member of Parliament for the area, the Honorable Michael Pintard, encouraged students to call on God and to express love while persons are alive because many wait until it's too late. 
for all of us who are still here, I encourage you, as you go through this school year, to turn to each other. Don't be afraid to pay a compliment to a classmate or to a teacher or to a student. Don't be afraid if you admire somebody and, and, and you love them to tell them how much you love them. Principal Bronwyn Smith says the country has lost two potential young leaders and notes that the entire school can learn from the situation. We are going to use it as an opportunity for all of our maids to realize that, you know what, I need to really buckle up, I need to make better choices, I need to realize that what I have to offer I should use it for the best and to, to really elevate it myself, my school, my community and actually to globally make a comeback to cause them to think bigger. Several psychologists were brought in to counsel the students. District Superintendent Yvonne Ward calling the day a sad one, noting that it is extremely difficult for the classmates of the victims. All of them have been together from grade one and this was going to be their year where they graduate together so of course it's going to be very difficult the entire year but um, what's so sad about it is that Jack Haywood started last year with the loss of a member of staff. He had just retired, I don't know if you remember the Campbell and so they're going to have to regroup. It's a family, they are a family and so I know that this too shall pass and they will, they will work through it. The two young men involved in the traffic fatality are believed to be 17-year-old Franklin Cooper and 17-year-old Perez Hepburn. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Italia Hall. Thank you, Italia. And of course, our thoughts and prayers are with the family as well as the student body of Jack Hayward High School. Switching gears now in other news, the government keeping its commitment to fully digitalize the public school system. Government signing a five-year contract with the Bahamas Telecommunications Company to install Wi-Fi at all 172 schools across the Bahamas. While on Grand Bahama, the Minister of Education discussed some of the plans to be put in place to ensure that the primary school system is 100% digitized. Italia Hall reports. The Minister of Education, the Honorable Jeff Lloyd, says a number of changes will come on stream soon to help transform the education system. He says the government has approved the application for BTC and Cable Bahamas to install fiber optic cable in every school for the new school year. The objective is that the entire system become digitized by the end of the school year. That's next year, June. The entire system, 172 schools, 60 satellite education offices. That's number one. Number two, every school is going to be Wi-Fi throughout the system beginning September over the course of the next year. Also come this September, he says primary school students across the country will have tablets. That's approximately 30,000 students. So we are on our way. Contract is about to be signed where every pre-primary and primary school student will be having a device in their hand. Now, that device requires an internet. This is where BTC and Cable Bahamas comes in. And it also requires there to be Wi-Fi throughout the system. Each of the teachers in the primary school and the preschool will have a laptop and the teacher's aid. The minister says technology is a vital tool within the education system. More and more of our parents are choosing to have their children schooled at home. We also, you mentioned earlier about this issue with regard to teacher shortage. You have in the summit islands, critical shortage of specialist teachers in science and mathematics. This will be remedied through uh, technology. So we are anxiously awaiting for this rollout and the completion of it, which will enable us to cover a lot of gaps that now um, obtain in the system. And as it relates to the entire curriculum, he says it will be reformed to make it more relevant to the needs and demands of today's society. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Italia Hall. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Stay with us. There's more news right after this break.